Hello everyone on YouTube land, Nintendo fanboy, Osama back here as always. Alright, I'm going to jump right into this here because E3 is underway and I want to get this video out of the way here. Uh, tomorrow's EA's thing and they're showing Star Wars, that new Star Wars game. Um, I don't remember what the subtitle of that Star Wars game is, but they're showing off that tomorrow and then obviously the 11th, yeah, it's on Sunday, the 11th is, um, yeah, that is Sunday, right? Jesus Christ, what is wrong with me? That is Nintendo's. E3 Direct, so, and then obviously Microsoft's and a lot of stuff, is that the same day or something like that, I remember, the 10th, I don't know, I want, I'm looking forward to that, some of the third party games and stuff that I want, or something, that, some, some of the third party games I'm, that I'm excited for, so, E3 is very, very soon, so I want to get this out of the way, uh, you know, with the title, uh, it, I'm talking about Pokemon, the Direct, I'm a, little, I'm a little late on both here, but getting to it just now, I watched the Pokemon thing when... I didn't watch it when it was live. I watched it like an hour or whatever. Because it was right in the morning. I was like, oh my god. Things in the morning. I thought it was going to be like in the afternoon or 3 or 4 or 5 in the afternoon. But it's like... Oh my god. This is crazy. It was like... Yeah. Nuts. But... Uh, um, Pokemon. They showed off more of the region. You know. It looks like Pokemon. It looks really good. The, gra the graphics look great. Uh... It does look cell shaded actually, yeah. I mean, I looked at it and I was like, wow, this looks really good. Uh, the region, it looks... I said this in my other videos, you know. My other reaction video to that first Direct for Pokemon Sword and Shield. It looks like a semi-open world. Because you can see Pokemon like running around and stuff. You can see what they're trying to do. I guarantee you the next generation of Pokemon after this will be a fully realized open world Pokemon game. Um, I don't know how long... I don't know if anyone's bringing this up, but... I don't know how long they're planning on doing the versions, two of them at the same time. I, maybe they'll do both because, you know, it makes them more money. You know, you get this, these Pokemon in this version, and this Pokemon in this version, or this Legendary. And, oh, they've been doing it since the beginning, you know, like, but I guarantee you, like, they're going to do fully open world. But this looks semi-open world. It looks really good. Um, I really do kind of like that song that plays when they show the game. It looks really, you know, like, awe-inspiring, you know, it looks really nice. Like I said, the, the colors pop. It looks really good. Cell shaded. It's it's awesome. They they um. I mean, it looks the same. It looks samey. It does. I mean, it's Pokemon. You know, when you have a series that's been around for decades, and it's very formulaic. This is it is. It's as good as it ever it's gonna get. It really is. When it comes to this series, when it comes to a lot of franchises out there that I love, it's, it's some franchises out there just hit a wall and they kind of reach their peak in a way where it's like, this is it. This is as good as it's gonna get until. The next generation where you fully realize it and it looks like a just you know wow but you can tell that you, know, you see pokemon walking around and stuff like that like i guess they're taking that from the let's go where you see pokemon it's not like i'm sure they're gonna have obviously it's random battles you know obviously like normal pokemon game but you can just see the pokemon walking around you know what i mean like it looks really cool i like that i like seeing the pokemon walk around when it's a big open world not top down classic view and all that stuff i mean like See, like, a Charizard fly in the background way over there, or just depth, you know what I mean? Like, just big. But you can you can tell it's semi-open world. It looks like a 3D Pokemon game. Um, and it looks good. It's really, really cool. Uh, and they introduced some new stuff, Dynamax, or whatever, where your Pokemon gets really big. I was, I watched it, I was like, this is kind of unoriginal. And I thought about it more, and I was like, yes, this is really unoriginal. It's like, the Pokemon get big. Wow. Nothing really original. I can tell that they're trying to do some new stuff there, here and there, but... I don't like the legendaries. I really don't like the legendaries in, in this version. They look okay, but they're better than the starters. You know what I mean? They're better than the starters. At least they have some, some sort of design with them. I think the starters just look really flat to me and just boring. And then just, just eh, their faces look derpy. Their faces look derpy on all three of them. You know what I mean? I don't remember the names of them, though, but they just look really derpy, though. <laughs> uh, they don't look cute. They don't have the Pokemon feel to it where you're like, oh, that looks really cool. I'm going to pick that one. You know when a starter is good when you're like, people are excited and when they're like, yeah, I'm picking that one. This right here is just like, for me anyways, I don't know about anybody else, I'm sure other people are excited about it, but for me it just kind of falls flat. Just kind of like, eh, I don't know. But anyways, yeah, the direct was okay. It was like 60 minutes, you know, they were showing off, you know, the region and all that stuff, so. But this is another thing that I really wanted to talk about, and that is Google Stadia. This is an IGN wiki thing showing up, you know, telling you what you need for it to use Google Stadia. Um, there's a Stadia Founders Edition. That's not a system. It's just a thing where you get like, yeah, components or something. It says right here, subscription codes and blah, blah, blah. I'll put the link in the description for that. 
Um, I'm sure you already saw that Pokemon Direct, so I need to put that in there. Um, I'll put this in here. Uh, but yeah, $130 for the Founders Edition. I have no intention of buying this. Did I say that in this video? Because I, I tempted this video a couple times. I don't remember. <laughs> I tempted this video a couple times to get it right. But uh, yeah, I'm not buying into Google Stadia. I have no intention for this. I have no intention at all with this. Um, I just have to talk about it, you know. Because it's a big thing in gaming. Obviously, it's not Nintendo related, but, you know, I, I got to talk about it. Uh, but yeah, $130 for the Founders Edition, that's whatever, okay. Limited Edition Night Blue Controller, like, you need that. Okay, it's $70. I'm sure this, yeah, this is gonna be in stores, Target, Walmart, Best Buy, you know, it's gonna be everywhere. Chrome, you need a Chromecast, Chromecast Ultra, which is another $70, $69, I'm sure it's $70. Three month Stadia Pro sub subscription, $9.99 per month for that, so there's a big thing. I mean, this is one three month buddy pass to give Stadia to a friend, okay, whatever. Um... Yeah, ten dollars a month, and the games I heard are sixty dollars a piece. And stream up, okay, stream up to four K, sixty frames per second, HDR with five point one surround sound, access to free games. These are all point points, so these are all main things here. It's the only thing I'm reading off in here. I'm not. We're gonna read everything in here. I'm not gonna read all the games that are coming with launch. You can read that yourself, but they're all third party games. Like it's Doom Eternal, Doom twenty sixteen, oh, Rage two. I mean, it's all third party stuff. Tomb Raider. Rise of the Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, which is the first game in that trilogy. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which got announced. Tom Clancy's Division 2. I mean, there's like, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's third-party games. <laughs> I mean, I know it's not a system, it's a you know, streaming service, but a lot of these are, you know, a lot of these are multiplayer type games. You know, this is going to be really hard on your internet, if you have really good internet. I have good internet, but I don't know if it's good enough for this. I don't know. And I don't have, uh, internet caps i don't have that so that i would be good but at the same time i don't want this this is stupid who is this for like who honestly who is this for and when you launch a new system it's not a system but when you launch something like this like you have to have your own exclusive games for it to be worth it you, you already have an xbox you already have ps4 you have a pc and switch switch has some of these third-party games like you already have other reasons to play these types of games other areas i mean this is all cloud-based too like this is dumb Sixty dollars for no. This is not. This, this is not going to last. And this is that's that's another thing I wanted to talk about. This whole extreme gaming thing is just dumb. I have nothing else to say about Google Stadia. What it comes with. I already read off what you need. So yeah, I mean, don't have an internet cap. So <laughs> it's like four K. It's like one terabyte cap set. Like one terabyte access to free games as long as the subscription service is active. I heard that games are sixty dollars though. Exclusive discounts on games to purchase. Okay, yeah. All the city of base benefits. You have to pay a subscription service and then pay full price. That's just ridiculous. Then you got the, the controller looks really there's no picture of the controller on this article. I'm sure you can find it somewhere, but it looks really just generic. It looks like a generic it looks like a Switch Pro controller. <laughs> or an Xbox One controller combined. It just looks like both of them. Nothing really, you know, amazing. But this whole streaming gaming service thing that I wanted to talk about is just, you know, like, who's it for? Why? I mean, it's so unreliable, man. Like, can you imagine? I was thinking about this. Like, what if, you know, Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft, not anytime soon, not anytime soon they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do this, obviously. You know, the PS5 is coming out. Obviously, there's another, another Nintendo system coming out after Switch. We don't know that. There hasn't been anything going on about that, but we know it's coming, but not anytime soon. Like I said, you know, the next Xbox probably teased next year at the E3, or it could be teased this year, might not. They, no, it's not, it's probably teased next year. They could, obviously we have an Xbox One S digital version out there. This is just what I've been thinking. You can post your comments down below on this, and the whole Google Stadia, if you're gonna be buying into it, if you're gonna be buying the controller, it's all this stuff, you're gonna be buying into this. If it's for you, if it's not, ignore it. But this is just what I'm thinking, you know. Like I said, we have an Xbox One S digital version out there. I seen it, I was at Best Buy, I saw it. I was like, this is, okay, it's just a box, cool. Um, they could really well do this. They could follow Google and do this. They could, hey, you need this and this for this, and you can play. Nintendo could easily do this. They could, they could have an app, you download, here's our service. Um, you need something to connect, to, to connect back to your TV. Here's just the controller. Um, you know, like a standard controller. Um, you never really know. Sony could do that too. Mike, I mean, Mike, yeah, Microsoft could do it too. Here's our. You're gonna have 
I hope they don't. If they do, I'm done gaming. I'm, I'm done. Like, I know it's a scary thought, but it's just one of those things like, here's your controller. Here's the thing that you plug in the back of your TV. Maybe not that. I'm not sure they'll go that far. But, you know, like, here's your thing. But here's also your digital version of your system. So you have two choices. Your, here's your box that you put under your fucking TV in your TV stand or your entertainment center. Or you can just subscribe to our service and do that. That's what I've been thinking, like... It could go that way very, very slowly for them. Google's obviously doing that right away because, well, they're Google. And they don't, you know, yeah. I don't know, man. Like, the streaming service thing is just, it, yeah. I mean, who is it for? Is it for the new age gamers out there? Is it for the generation after me? Like, I don't I don't know. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I don't like it because it's cloud-based. You don't own these games. Just like Steam. You don't own those games. If Steam shut down today or tomorrow... You wouldn't own that stuff. Look at iTunes. iTunes is shutting down, right? Or is that just a rumor? I don't even know. Like all this stuff that you bought, is that not tied to your account? Or is it, do you have it on your phone or your iPod Touch? You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand. I never use, obviously, obviously iTunes or whatever that. But you know what I mean, though? Like, when you look at Steam, you don't own those games, do you? Or is it just tied to their... I mean, you bought all those games through their uh, site or whatever through their service through their service and i don't know if it shuts down today or tomorrow or next year or whatever it's like you're kind of screwed i think right i don't even know um i just don't like the idea of not owning your games like it, it is just ridiculous because games cost a lot of money um it takes up space on certain things too and it's just not reliable especially with multiplayer gaming like it's just it's not good because when you watch a movie, it's just a movie, and there's not a lot going on there. Just a you know a file with a <laughs> with a it's just a movie, you know. With a game, there's just a lot of stuff going on there, and not a lot of people have a reliable internet. If some do, fine, but it's just not good. I don't think so, anyways. I mean, I have good internet. Even if you do have good internet, like you still want to own your games. You still want to own your games. You still want to have your games there. Like I've owned this. I you know I have something out of this. And it's not taking up space somewhere where you have to, like, it's just so, I don't know how to describe it. But you get my point, though. It's just, I don't, I'm not, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's just, it's not for me. Um, and you're putting all this money and all this stuff. And games cost so much money. It's an expensive hobby. And when you buy something, you want something in return and not some, you know, there's nothing there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so... This just kind of sucks, but yeah, it's yeah nine ninety nine per month, and I heard the games are sixty dollars a month, I mean sixty dollars a piece. So I don't know if that's right or not, so I'm not going to take that too seriously. But still, it's yeah. And who knows how many people want to buy a Chromecast? I mean, not a lot of people want stuff you know plugged into their HDMI ports because they have other stuff plugged in. Like, I don't know. This is definitely for a different different audience. So, if you're watching this, I don't know if this is for you or not. It's definitely not for me. So, yeah. Comment out below. Um, streaming service, how long do you think this will last? Like, honestly, like, is this going to be a trend? Is this going to be something that's permanent and for a different audience? Is this for you? So, I really don't know much more I can say about this. But it's not for me. I don't like when, you know, when you have gaming, when you have these boxes and all these things and these devices, the Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, and all that stuff, um, and, you're, and you're doing digital only, that's kind of not right in my opinion because it's just taking up space and you have to keep on cleaning out things. When you have the actual copy of the game, you're whatever. Obviously, on the other Xbox and PS4, you have to, you know, install the game even, even though you have the physical copy. That's kind of sucky. With Switch, you don't. You have some updates here and there, which also sucks. You know, the day one update, or which is like a 20 gig update for some, for some games. Sometimes they're bigger, you know. But with Switch, you don't have to install the entire game, at least on the entire system there. That would be ridiculous. But like I said, with games, when you buy the physical copy, it's not installed on the system like the Switch. You don't have to rely on it. It's not, you know, a nuisance. It's a hassle. It really is. When, when you look at it, you're just like, this is not right. This is just stressful. And games are not supposed to be stressful. Playing a game is not, it's a hobby, it's entertainment. It shouldn't have to be stressful. Um, 
you know, when you think of the term next gen or whatever like that, you're it's supposed to be convenient. When you think of futuristic technology or where we're at right now, it should be there. You know what I mean? Instead of being, oh God, I have to clean out all my stuff now. I don't have enough room. I have to buy an overpriced SD card, micro SD card. It's just, uh, it's just stupid. I don't know. I like my games physical, so a streaming service is not going to work out for gaming. I don't know how long. You have to have good servers, especially when you're playing multiplayer. You can't have it lag. You can't do that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah. I don't know. I said my piece on this, so. Anyways, peace out. Comment down below what you think about the Pokemon Direct. You excited for Pokemon Sword and Shield? I am. That looks really, really good, actually. It looks really good. I haven't played a Pokemon game since X and Y. This looks really good, honestly. Like, I took a break because it was just kind of, like, kind of burnt out, and they were just all the same, and I'm just kind of like, eh, you need a break. But, you yeah, know, also, what's your thoughts on Google Stadia and streaming gaming and all that stuff? Are you going to buy into this Google Stadia thing? So, yeah. Anyways, peace out. More random videos coming soon. E3 is starting. I will do my recap of Nintendo's E3 Direct and whatever games out there that interest me. So, anyways, peace out. More random videos coming soon. Later. Bye.